Cat Club Chats, episode 45. Uh, where should we start with this? We've got Ospreys, former Wales Sevens captain and over 100 appearances there. Two caps for Wales, Newport, Ebervale, Cardiff Met, Olympic silver medalist. Have I missed anything or am I on, I'm on the right track? Yeah, I'm late, I think. Mr. Sam Cross. Just, uh, done your research. I, I, I've done a, done a little bit, boy. Mr. Sam Cross, how are you, pal? What's news in your world? Uh, not much, mate. Uh, been on some college online lectures in yeah. the new world this morning. Yeah. Uh, enjoying that on the one day off a week from rugby. So, yeah, exciting times. What are you doing in college at the moment? I'm uh, doing a PGC. So, in oh, yeah. the second year now, it's like obviously options after rugby, quite yeah. uh, enjoy that lecturing, teaching, sort of that, going down that kind of route. Just yeah. Enjoying it? Keep on with something while you're playing. So, is it good? Enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, it's really enjoyable. Actually, um, done quite a bit, like a bit of lecturing last year. Um, obviously, with the Ospreys, we were based at Neath and Port Albert College, so yeah, they yeah. got a foot in the door there for me. I was doing a bit of lecturing on the Friday there. Oh, class! Uh, done my degree in UIC, like as you said, a couple of years ago, and um, yeah, just trying to sort of get uh, some things for the CV for the dreaded life, uh, life after rugby. Oh, mate, you're young in the rugby world, pal. You've still got a few years left. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> What's, um, sorry, I'm just going to crack over. I normally have a beer with every episode, but I'm playing footy in a bit. So I've got uh, <laughs> a non, non-alcoholic Tiny Rebel. Nice. That's What's, probably... the, what is that? What's the Tiny Rebel like? Good stuff? Or... Yeah, it is nice. It's, um, I, I was never a massive one for lagers. Normally more of a cider drinker. But yeah, um, like the... yeah I mean, I much prefer cider. Nice like Orchard Thieves or something. But to be fair, the Tiny Rebel Lager is nice. They do a key lime one, which is lovely. Um, club's quite nice. Like I don't really like pale ales either, but these ones are quite nice. So uh, yeah, they've got a couple of bars in town if you're ever ever around. I think I think I had the uh, is it Brew Dog in Cardiff? Yeah, Cardiff? there is a, there is something like that. Yeah. yeah, it's not normally my cup of tea, but to be fair, the guys at Tiny Rebel are good. The branding's good, and they're good blokes. So it's a pretty easy fit. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, what? So talk me through the last. Uh, f- for anyone listening, we don't really know each other that well, to be honest. So I'm kind of coming in this with a bit of a sort of blank canvas and happy to sort of listen and learn. What's the last six months, as we know it, kind of been for you and rugby and COVID and being at home and training? How's all that been for you? Um, yes, yeah, uh, challenging. Uh, got a young daughter. She's two. Oh, so, uh, like training from home, you're sort of getting up first thing in the morning to try and get your sort of day out, well, get your training day out the way as early as possible. Because, yeah, you know, it was like with little ones, you sit around for a couple of hours, you can't, you just can't get from, can't get out. They will know you yeah, go. Yeah. So, yeah, we had a decent training group. Um, uh, Scott Baldwin's back from Harlequins, he yeah. lives in the end, and uh, Brad Davis, I think he's the with me. Yeah. Um, us three trained together, socially distanced through uh, through the summer in Bridgend. Yeah, um, we were quite lucky. The Ravens give us use of the brewery field, oh, so we had a yeah, decent uh, surface. And um, yeah, uh, we had a home gym then set up in the garage. Managed to get some stuff from uh, Ospreys. Yeah, so yeah, we were training pretty early. Um, it's quite good actually, just to have a sort of block to. As, like with rugby, you're sort of constantly playing and trying to train and to have a block just to focus on, like getting fit, uh, all the kind of niggles, uh, getting yeah. rid of those, and yeah, training in a small group. It was weird, the uh, weird to start, but then yeah, you get it, like your yeah, smart watches, heart rate monitors, and you start to buy things because you're interested in getting a bit of feedback, <laughs> yeah. this yeah. feedback from training, and you're not getting any training on your own, so. Yeah, I think every sort of rugby player in Wales is buying their heart rate monitors, smart watches, <laughs> road bikes, anything to sort of keep entertained and mix your train up. I got a wetsuit and started some open water swimming first time in lockdown, just fa- something nice. I fancy doing. Yeah. Um, got a road bike, started doing some riding. I wanted to do like a sort of bit of a triathlon at the end of it, but <laughs> yeah. uh, physios uh, suggested it might not be the best idea, so... But yeah, I enjoy just mixing things up, like doing a bit of things like tennis, salt water swimming, biking, just yeah, things yeah. you don't not, like, normally get to do. Yeah, and you, you'll be doing an Ironman now after all this is over. You'll have uh, all the kit. 
Yeah, until, you have a, until you actually do a bit of it, you get the kit, you're like, oh, this season's brilliant. And then the swimming yeah. was fresh. And then you actually run without the ball and you're like, oh, this is actually uh, not, not that fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate running, mate. I hate, I mean, I'm a big boy, but I fucking hate running. Uh, Dog there's shit. some people like, oh, I'll put music in and uh, the time flies by. I'm like, I fe- I'm feeling every single step. It's yeah. Like, some silly bastard started that thing um, for a good cause, like for the NHS, donate five, run five, nominate five. I'm surprised though, actually, how hard that was because we always train every day and you look at your GPS at the end of the day and it's always like five, six K and you're like, oh, it wasn't so bad. Yeah. I've never, I don't think since my year 11 in school, like you know, <laughs> your end of the school run, the end of the year, you do like a one long run cross country. Yeah. I haven't run 5K since then. Mate. And they were savage. Brutal, like I was just trudging by up the Taft Trail, like sweating my box off. Like, <laughs> fucking horrible. I nominated my missus then, who's never had a run in her life. Oh, she fucking hated me. Absolutely hated me. Like, off you go. See you later. Surprised not far 5k is though, because I was running and I was like, God, how far am I here? I'm like, God, 1.2k. <laughs> Brutal. Livid. Yeah, I mean, I hate it. But definitely people cheated on some times. I've seen some times come oh, through yeah. and I was like, God, this is berserk. Pausing it, getting yeah. their breath back, and then going again. Ugh. Wankers. Um, yeah. What do you do away from sort of training then? Like, especially during lockdown, where you've got probably a lot more time back. You said you've got a daughter. What else do you kind of get up to? Are you big into your films or music or anything like that? Um, yeah, uh, like Netflix, bash some, bash some CVs out. Uh, yeah. Addicted to those. Like, like, me and my missus start something and she goes to bed like half past nine. Uh, she's like a goes to bed early so she we start a series seven o'clock get through to half nine and i'm one of them people i can't stop so she goes to bed i flick it off and then as soon as she's upstairs i'm like god i need to know she comes back <laughs> down and four or five episodes in front of her and she's like oh i'm never never watching the series with you you you're not watch like the the fall it was quite big when the, the that's right stranger like yeah a couple of good ones come uh come out yeah. during lockdown she's got to catch up on some uh did you see the outsider some, there's the outsider i think was another one as well that was good yeah they're all quite similar weren't they They're yeah yeah plot. yeah it's, uh, some good ones and uh yeah mainly then just yeah like out walking with a little one out with the dog and yeah. um me and lloyd evans we run um a coaching business in yeah. like, south wales so we got to do some planning and um sort of try and tap into some sort of government grants um obviously it's been quite tough trying to get the kids back playing rugby so we got generation sevens trying to get like young rugby players in wales engaged in yeah. sevens and yeah they've been building really nicely the last 12 months uh covid slowed us down a little bit but the, the last sort of 12 weeks we were able to well before this sort of second spike we managed to get groups of 30 back up and running oh class which was yeah pretty good um sort of do the four days a week. Uh, we had Ben Roach in from Wales Sevens coming to help out, sort of guest coach. Yeah. And uh, we had that nice block of weather for it as well. So, yeah, it yeah. Uh, started back well and then uh, COVID uh, <laughs> stopped again. But, yeah, it's, uh, the business has grown really well and uh, like it's grown really well in Bridgend and we've sort of started up in Penalta uh, as well. So, oh, yeah. Grow it now. Good club down there, Penalta. I played uh, played up there a bit with rugby league. Good, uh, good yeah, people up there. Now they got like the four G up there as well. Yeah. It's a fucking setup. Yeah, class, mate. I love that. Take us back to uh, take us back to the beginning, then, mate. What's um, what was your journey like? Because you do you grew up in Abergavenny or up that way yeah, somewhere. Abergavenny grew up in Bramall, just up the road. Yeah. Okay. What was your journey like then to get through to you know through school and club and. Obviously, you excelled at sevens before you started the Pro 15s journey. What was that like? Yeah, so uh, growing up, I wasn't uh, in, like didn't enjoy like wasn't interested in rugby at all. Really, um, I was like football mad, uh, big Arsenal fan. Yeah, uh, grew up playing football up until sort of under 16s. Yeah, so. I had to play, my PE teacher forced me to play rugby in school, just dabbled in like any position in the backs, really never played in the forwards. Yeah. I um, was a uh, footballer and to play football, he said, oh, well, the rugby boys help you out and join the football team, so you have to come and play rugby. So yeah, yeah. kind of done it that way. And then uh, at under 16s, then you go into the senior football, but all my mates went into senior rugby. Okay. Um, senior football was... 
uh, it wasn't as good really. Uh, the, you see the rugby boys who go into youth and they have like this really good crack and that yeah, sort yeah. of culture around rugby and in the rugby club and the rugby club like you have a couple of beers and sort of look after you in that way and it just wasn't the same sort of community of football at that age. Yeah. So yeah, I got a bit jealous really of the boys playing rugby and yeah, I crossed over then uh, started playing rugby properly at youth. So that's yeah. 16, 17, so quite, quite a late start. That is late, yeah, that is late. Yeah, so I played youth rugby, um, done my A-levels at Brimau, and uh, then I decided um, I wanted to go to UIC. Uh, as I was playing youth rugby, I sort of uh, started growing into it a little bit, then yeah. um, went, moved into the back row, started really enjoying it. My last year of youth, they asked me to play for the seniors. Yeah. Um, so they were, I think it was like Swaylek, Division 1 now, East. Yeah. So the season of playing senior rugby and then went to UIC. Uh, I think that like done me a world of good because when you go to university, like it's I know you have got a good side, but technically the boys starting in first year have never played senior rugby before they get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and be UIC. UIC's one of those. Uh, not all universities are like this. I suppose UIC's fortunate, whichever way you look at it, that they play Saturday rugby in the Welsh leagues, and also university rugby on the on the Wednesday as well. So you might even play in Narbeth away on a Saturday, getting your head tuned in up there. Yeah, and then playing against Durham University on the Wednesday, where actually they're quite nice boys. So it's just yeah, it's it's a bit it's easier like, physically. Yeah, the standard of the backs rugby was like so much better than the league rugby, but the league rugby yeah. was hard because you're students. Everyone wants to just beat you up and kick <laughs> yeah, up you and yeah, um, and you're technically a lot, lot better rugby players than the level you're playing at. But yeah, there's there's like men v boys technically, and they. Yeah. They, they come after you when you you win your home games, but then when you go up the valley and playing up here, it's like Bonner Mine and Swansea at the top of the hill, <laughs> yeah. and guide kicking lumps out you. It's uh, yeah, it's a it's a tough one, but yeah, it's really good sort of breeding ground at UIC. The program they run, Die Watts with the S and C, yeah. like sort of one of the first people to introduce me to that kind of world, and he's really switched on. Done like done me a world of good a couple of pre seasons with him. Sort of yeah, it's the strongest I've been still to this day. And Chris Davey, Danny Milton, um, yeah, yeah, really, really good coaches, really respected, sort of in Welsh rugby. So uh, I always, uh, any young rugby players, I always recommend like that university route. Yeah, you see the guys like Alex Donbrandt now, they're carving up in the Premiership. Boys that are yeah. coming, they're still grinding up international players now to this day in through yeah, university yeah. rugby. It was um, class. Yeah. I, I loved it there. Like I wasn't that good, but uh, the culture and like you know, you got fifty boys across two or three squads. Yeah. All hang around together, like you said, training in the morning, you know, before you need go to your lectures if you went, and then yeah. tra- train again well, in the evening. Powerful life, though, like like people like die watts, like get you in training half seven in the morning, get you yeah. like they sort of get you into a routine where you're used to like almost like the real world, and yeah, almost like being a professional rugby player at the university. Yeah, weird. it is. But the culture then, like on the Wednesday, all like the boys, like the fresher, second, thirds, all come and watch the seniors. Yeah, it's straight after in the SU, big circle, drinking games, like the culture yeah. environment they got there is like really uh, it's, it's, it is special. They used to have, um, it's not open anymore, they used to have Bar Risa on a Wednesday. Yeah. And so we'd do that, and then Wednesday we'd be in Teresa, it'd be two pound of double vodka Red Bull, and you'd go down, it was three floors downstairs, R and B room, turn left, you at rugby, and then just. Wow. Girls 50 boys on the Uick rider belting songs oh, out yeah. half hour of the time. <laughs> and about four girls getting abuse like <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it, yeah yeah Glad it, 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 yeah I know mate it never will like it never will um, yeah, imagine now this is your first year of university now this year oh, you, brutal. you can't play any rugby you can't go out like you missed your fresher week I just think I, I think I'd knock on the head for you and go back next year yeah I had 100% I had this conversation with someone uh, the other day I had 100% defer you know, I, I I don't know too much about the process that they go through now because obviously I'm a bit older, but it seems like from the outside looking in, the universities, not so much universities maybe, but definitely the some of the um, housing organisations, the student lettings and the flats, got the students in, taking the money, and then, right, it's online learning, so you could have just done it from home. Yeah. But they didn't want people not paying that because they would have lost out money. I don't know, it just seems a bit bad, but... But that's my unknowledgeable yeah, opinion. You see, I think 
to them, but our students can't go on for Christmas, things like that. Oh, and, yeah. so, and in Edinburgh, in, uh, in Scotland, I've seen they've like actually locked them in the buildings and there's people like guarding them and they're, they're not like that. It's like fucking Hunger Games or something. Like. It's, well, yeah, it is bonkers. But it's like, wild. Like, as in life experiences, your fresh year of uni is probably one of my top life experiences. Like, the yeah. things that people are missing out on that. But, yeah. And they're paying three times the money we were back then as well. It gets bonkers. It's brutal, mate. So I, um, I don't envy anyone going through that at the moment. I'd 100% try and defer good travelling for a year or two if you can. Get to somewhere where you're allowed to, you know, age or wherever it might be. Or just work if you can. Build a business, yeah. start a business, just graft. Because uh, there is more to life than that. Sitting in your fucking dorm every day with 15 people you don't know. Imagine you, like I, had, I was all right with who I lived with, but imagine you, you just rock up and there's 15 people you fucking hate. Yeah, well, to be fair, the boy, I turned up and uh, I, I still say to the boys now, you've still got a uni WhatsApp group, you're probably, probably the same. Yeah, I have, yeah. The, the misfits. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, who are these? But like, this is like fucking in between us, the blokes I've ended up with here. Like, <laughs> like, two of them like, spoke fluent Welsh from North Wales. I don't think they spoke, like, hardly spoke any English. The English was terrible. Yeah. A scouser, a guy from uh, Exton. I was like, oh, who are these? Lot? And then you first couple of days, you're like, don't mix at all. And then one no. night on the piss together, and then your best mates is like, yeah, yeah. And you, the, at the moment now, they just stuck together. They don't even get that like sort of loose snow where they all have a couple of drinks together. And yeah, it must be it's, weird. It must, yeah, it must be weird. And also, like, go to uni, and if you're single or whatever, you want to try and make the most of that and meet new people and make yeah. friends and all that stuff. And what, what are you going to do? Tinder to like, 20 meters and just see who's oh. on a different <laughs> floor like <laughs> it must be an app that someone's inventing oh yeah people stuck on campuses around the uk oh jesus christ i'd, I'd hate to think mate i'd hate to think how no, did but... you um so obviously you went through cardiff met playing 15s playing in the back row but your career started off in, in a professional capacity in that sevens environment so how did you get into that then and how did that journey go yeah, through you it began. We we'll have the Buck Sevens tournament. Yeah, and um, the standard that's like pretty high. Like the uh, sort of best universities in the country playing a like tournament. Then is a knockout, and then I think it goes to like the top eight universities playing like a, a finals day. Yeah, and you got like Durham, Loughborough, Exeter, Hartbury. Like it's it's pretty good standard there through yeah. like boys sort of playing for sort of extra chiefs gloucester um newcastle there's like northumbria teams like that so yeah the standard that's pretty good and uh, i got picked up from there by paul john and gareth babs yeah who were whale sevens they was sort of come to watch scout that at the time and they said oh do you fancy coming in to train with whale sevens so yeah i do my uni stuff and then on the Wednesday day off, um, I stopped playing uh, Bucks rugby then. I'd go in and train full, like, full day with the sevens. Yeah. And then I'd pick up like half days here and there around lectures, maybe on like a Monday or Friday. Uh, that was my first and second year. In my third year then, I went full time with the sevens. Yeah. And I split my third year part time, so I'd done it over two years instead of one. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was quite like we had my first tournament. I was um, sat in uh, my uni house with the boys. Um, they had a couple of beers after a Wednesday game. And then a phone call come through um, from the sevens coach. They were away at the tournament. Uh, they uh, Someone picked up a knock and they're like, oh, look, um, you're flying to Vegas tomorrow for your first sevens leg. <laughs> and at the, that night, the, it was funny, like, the Super Bowl was on. So we were watching the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, in America, uh, and a couple of beers like in the uni house. Uh, someone rings me up, oh, like, yeah, your stuff ready, 6 a.m. tomorrow, cabs picking you up from your uni house. You fly into Vegas for your first sort of play on the World Series. So I see the boys, I was like, fuck, boys, can't have a couple of beers, you know. I'm uh, pretty good beasted as soon as I get this. Uh, but yeah, first tournament, I couldn't have really picked like a better venue. My first time going to Vegas as well. So uh, I think it was two of us. And even Evans met up there at the very taxi picked us up and yeah, we flew out to meet the boys in Vegas. My sort of food that didn't really uh, back then. That's sort class. of class. Hey, Vegas as well, like Vegas oh, yeah. is fucking class. Like, like obviously Dubai and Hong Kong are like your big ones in like as a 
place that like, gets your first one, sort of Vegas. I was like, oh, you can't beat that. Like flying in, seeing the strip, be like, oh, this is mad. I was still in uni at the time. I was like, on oh, no money. I, in my overdraft, about three grand, flying to Vegas. Like, oh, this is this is bonkers. Who was in the um? Who was in the sevens team then that we'd know? Um, so Ivan Evans, Reese Jones, yeah, uh, Richie Pugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Williams, um, Cubby, uh, Alex Weber, Jason Aries. Oh yeah, I know Jason. Yeah. It was a it was a good group to be fair. It was yeah, it was some good boys in there. Sort of real good team. Wales sevens had where it was like 15, 20 boys contracted. Yeah. It was like after that group kind of broke up, that's when it started going, they kind of lost the funding a bit and started going a bit downhill. But yeah, those yeah. boys, uh, like my, um, I think my second tournament there was Hong Kong and we made the final and we lost yeah. you know, 19 nil up in the final at half time against Fiji. And then uh, that's when Corey Allen was on fire and uh, yeah, yeah, carving it up. And then uh, they come back and uh, <laughs> from 19 nil down and beat us. But yeah, first two leg at Vegas, first one, and then second tournament, the final in Hong Kong. I was like, oh, this sevens, Mark, he's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> That's class. How did you find that transition going from, uh, I suppose, you know, to be fair, you a good standard of training and good level of playing, but how did you it's find that transition? Yeah, how did you find the guy Watts, like the, the conditioning yeah. sessions and the gym session stuff, I think, yeah, put me in really good sort of shape going in there. Um, maybe just like the loading of training, like how much running sevens players actually do. That was like the main difference. Like physically, it felt good, but um, and that like sort of skills under pressure, like that extra bit of space on the field. I think it took me like probably a bit longer than like normal. Really, it took me probably a year, year and a half to sort of adjust. Uh, I didn't really played any sevens before going yeah. and played a bit of black rugby, but nothing to like the level and the standards of that group. Like they were. Sort of reshells, which people leave back, set the standard really high. Yeah. And um, the, yeah, you have to sort of earn your respect to sort of get in there. And um, it's it sort of drifted away from that now. It's more of like a development tool. The sevens that come in and the young boys sort of real well looked after. And I'm almost a bit jealous. Like, man, I think, oh, when I, was, when I first came in, the fucking boys were screaming at me if a ball went down or pass went, uh, pass didn't go to hand. I think you had Wayne Proctor, conditioner at the time, who. Yeah. He's known as the Greyhound. He literally would run <laughs> you to death. We were on Moose and Mouse Sand Dunes on Saturday oh. mornings. And uh, John's, he lived on this mental hill. He'd take us up there and run you to death up there. And then if you picked up an injury or you were moaning your legs, you cramped, things like that, he'd put you on a yeah. push bike up there. So you'd end up running. So you're like, oh, I'd rather run up there than go on a push bike. He, he lives in Quakers Yard or Triaris or something, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I know, I know the hill because there's a pub at the bottom of it and I've been in there. It's berserk hill. It's literally like this. Yeah, it is. I know exactly where that is. And then all the boys be spewing in his garden. And he'd be fucking shouting the boost at you there. Fucking hell, cross! He's spewing in my fucking garden. You're thinking, no. <laughs> it's the hardest session of my life. You got it. It grows you up a little bit, though, doesn't it? It builds a bit of resilience. Oh yeah, it, um, like mentally, t- mental toughness. Seven training is right up there. Like you go, yeah. the places you think you wouldn't be able to go to, you go to and play rugby there as well. So. Yeah, real good. Like the uni and sevens, like both really good sort of breeding grounds for like young 15s players. Like it's uh, just like for young players going to play sevens. Like my first couple of tournaments, like playing second tournament Hong Kong, playing in front of like 60, 70,000 people. Yeah, like main event on Sky. Like not many boys at like 18, 19 get exposed to that now. Like. The, it was either that or you're playing in the Premiership. Like I know where I'd be rather be learning my uh, learning my trade. Okay, right, mate. And I suppose you're also learning some life lessons. You know, living abroad, moving, having to look after yourself a bit more. Yeah, Just those things. Like, sort of uni set you up for it a bit, but like sevens, like uh, the way you, like, you have to look after yourself, like with like sleep, nutrition, travel, um, like rooming with different people is like. Uh, like it's quite a lot of old heads there. And like the sevens last couple of years being a lot of young boys, but yeah, they're sort of going in with the old head. Like I remember Richelle, I make sure I was in the single bed. I f- chucked my bag on the double bed. He's like, Fuck me, boy, you're not in there. You- <laughs> you're about 50 <laughs> tournaments short of ever getting in one of those. <laughs> so, you know, little things I enjoyed though later on uh, down the series when uh, I ended up with a young roommate and he think he's in the double bed. He's like, got oh, no chance. Well. <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah. 
he's got the hierarchy still going like fuck off yeah but they were yeah it was a real good group at the time first come in um uh, with like it was like me cabby Corey, alex weber luke morgan uh, yeah. it's quite a lot of young boys coming through and i think uh, like them older boys um they they've done a real good job sort of bringing us through and sort of teaching us the ropes of like yeah. professional rugby really and what's what was your what did you played over 40 tournaments so you got a real good experience of what it was like how did you enjoy that lifestyle of it would normally be sort of two tournaments back to back every couple of months across the year you're training for the rest of the time were you playing much prem rugby or anything like that in between um first coming on i was but then as soon as i become like a regular and I sort of signed like a full time deal with the Sevens. Yeah. Then I stopped playing like any prep. It's just, um, it's just you're just not there enough. You're training full time. Yeah. And the two tournaments, um, it's really tough, like on the body. But then you get like six, seven weeks in between the two. So it's almost like yeah. you play two tournaments, mini preseason, play two tournaments. So you, every time you go to a tournament, you're feeling that like the peak of your powers. Yeah, which is like the main difference I find from 15s to now. You get in really good shape in pre-season, play a game, pick up knocks, then you're like hanging in there for the season for as long as you can. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like with sevens, you always go into tournaments like you've had a six, seven week training block and you feel really good going in. Nice. And um, obviously the travel like takes a bit out of you with the sevens that like you're coming home, you're sort of given a week to sort of adjust from the time differences, the yeah. two weeks of playing like 12 games over two weeks and um yeah, it's, just, it's, it's it is tougher on the body than people think like you play a game pick up knocks you don't like in 15s like how many times you play and then you feel all right then you get home and you're like after a couple of hours like fuck i got a dead leg or yeah yeah like that sounds like you sort of play feel all right and then oh, i go play another game and then cool down start feeling the knocks and a third game and then after a game of 15s like you couldn't imagine staying and play it like that, that thing on day two tough mass where you wake up, you feel like absolute bag of shit. And then you've got <laughs> no, you've got potentially three games again the day after. That's brutal, mate. You just like you just sort of like adjust to it. Yeah. Do you, I always do you... think like what it'd be like to go back now because I've done it so many times. Would I just actually like be able to do it or would I go back after I used to do this? I, I, I assume you like Playing 15s now, you've probably put on a bit more weight and a bit more stronger and, and bigger in that respect. Yeah, first coming in, I think uh, when, I first, when I first come from the Sevens, when I first played my first game for the Ospreys, uh, he's away in Europe and I literally hadn't done much 50 training at all. I'd literally played Sevens. Yeah. I think it's a video me scoring a try at the end of the game and I'm like walking back like with cramp or go run that's probably one of the fit I've been playing sevens but like that fifth I haven't played 80 minutes for probably like four or five years because when you're playing sevens you literally are a professional sevens player and um, yeah. 15s and played 80 minutes rugby since I probably played for Newport like four years before yeah. um, and then like uh, I think through like coaches and S and C's then at the time like oh, I'm obsessed with like putting weight on and things like that and yeah did initially put like five, six, seven kg on, um, yeah. and yeah, it didn't, it didn't really. Well, <clears throat> I didn't feel as good playing, and so I'm not far off like what well, my sevens weight was now. I'm around 100 kg. I, yeah. I feel like a bit fast. When I was like 105, I just didn't feel like that sort of like like my game is like that sort of speed, like fit, like it didn't Engine. really suit the game putting the weight down. Like I think that's the the biggest thing with. Sevens, fifteen, to sevens, but you go into fifteens environment. Like, all oh, right, you put weight down now. Play fifteens. I don't necessarily think that's the case. If like your point of difference is like a sevens player would be like probably like your your speed and your fitness. Like, it's no need to think you have to put that weight down yeah, just because yeah. you went to fifteen. I, th- I think I, well, but probably many others have fallen like victim to that as well. Because I remember putting it on and playing and think, oh, I feel like I feel like shit. Like, from I feel the heavy. Down. Yeah, just yeah, I feel heavy. Feel, don't feel. <clears> fitness, <throat> My engines are my main part of my game, and I just didn't feel I had the engine at at that weight. Yeah. Do you have um, do you have initiation for the sevens after your first? Uh, first yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's normally a like a, a pint on the head into a song. <laughs> so you're sat in a hotel room in a in a hotel somewhere around the world, like uh, the entire squad and the management team in there, 
and um, yeah, a, a song for everyone, and then uh, a beer on the head is is normally it. And then in certain locations, is like special initiations. <laughs> so uh, we had one in uh, Wellington. Yeah. Um, if if it's your f- if it's your first time in Wellington, there's this um, there's this down on the waterfront. I don't know if you've been to Wellington Harbour. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, so on the waterfront, it's the, the diving board that kind of goes out uh, on yeah. the front and you see people like locals jumping off it in the summer. But it's like a 15, 20 foot board into the sea. <laughs> regularly, see, I've, I've been once or twice and you've like regularly seen sharks, like baby sharks in this <laughs> water. And um, you have, they make, the boys make you jump off the board into the water. Yeah. Which is like if, if uh, when you it don't look like much from the side, and you actually look off the board, you're like, "Fuck, this is uh, actually a big jump." <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Alex Weber's initiation, and uh, he had to go off it, and he's like, "Oh, look, boys, I really don't want to do it." And Wayne Proctor was like forcing it on him. He's like, "Oh, you've got to jump, you've got to jump." All the boys peer pressured him in, so he jumped, jumped in, and we realised he's like basically can't swim. So he's oh, all he's off his diving board, his initiation. He's like paddling around in there, screaming like, and uh, we shell out there to jump off the bridge and literally rescue him from the water. I'm thinking, oh, what the fuck's <laughs> going on here? Well, that's probably the best initiation, like the other Wellington one, like to see yeah. him, people, like Lloyd Lewis was another one, like petrified the heights. He's up there and like, we're, he's up there 15 minutes and we're like, Lloyd, like you got to jump. We're not letting him down. Someone's on the steps, you're not coming down. Initially, uh, eventually jumps down like fucking flapping in the air. Oh, it's brilliant to see in boys like sheer shit in the pants. Yeah, class. I love that. I, I hope stuff like that never lose leaves the game as we get more professional because that's the stuff that brings you together as well, brings you closer. Yeah. To be fair though, like from when I first started now to now, like the culture in rugby has changed massively. Even like yeah. in that short of time, like since I first started, like initiations are a big thing. Socials. Um, I think it's easier with the sevens because you you become like a smaller type of group. Yeah. Like because you you're traveling all year together, like um, train to get obviously train together is like fifteen twenty of you maximum. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have that sort of close bond where you constantly like going out for beers and stuff together. Yeah. Uh, it's tougher obviously in fifteens because just the demand of games these days, like playing every yeah. week, is quite tough to. But, yeah, but like and, the young boys coming through, we don't seem uh, as hungry for like the socials and stuff anymore. Like uh, we got some yes. shocking at the Ospreys, Harry Morgan, Will Griffiths, <laughs> young boys. Like, they, just can't, they can't do it. They can't drink. Uh, they tip and they beer, the plant pots. And, oh uh, fuck it! I hate shit like that, mate. I hate, but they're the, they're the ones who'll be like, oh yeah, twelve beers. Fuck they are. Off. That's exactly what they like. Yeah. Yeah, I hate stuff like that, mate. I've, uh, I know one or two of them myself. The problem is, I was always the other way. I'd happily have the 12 beers and I couldn't play rugby. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just be social sec, like. No, I bet that's me at the Ospreys, social sec, best job in the world. <laughs> yeah, class. What was, um, what was that Olympic experience like then, pal? 2016, obviously got all the way to the semi-finals. Spoke to Luke Trahan a couple of months ago and... He was saying, obviously, his experience was different as travelling reserve. What was yours like in, in as part of that team, or the on-field team? Yeah, um, yeah, probably the best experience of my life. Like, uh, um, like from start to finish, unbelievable. First of all, like moving up to London for 10, 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, like living like in the Welsh Valleys, or lived in Cardiff for four years, like with uni year after yeah. uni, and then. Uh, you're constantly like speaking to people that have been lived in London and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, it's unbelievable!" Blah blah, blah the big smoke and all the rest of the yeah. jazz that comes with it. And you're like, "Oh, yeah, it does look good, does look good." And then you actually, we actually got to go and do it for twelve weeks, and uh, uh, like living in a hotel with a team that all live within like a couple of miles of the hotel. Like we formed a pretty close bond straight away. Yeah, we um, <clears throat> so we all played together on the series. Obviously, Wales, England, Scotland. Um, don't really get on. Didn't knew a couple of the boys through like uni and like played like GB seven students and stuff with a couple yeah. of them. Uh, Dan Bibby was at UH, Chippy was yeah, at yeah. UH. Yeah, yeah. Some, some mutual connections there, but um, like Scottish boys didn't really know many of them. And then you have like that rivalry when you play each other, uh, especially in like the Olympic year because we knew we were all competing for spaces with each other. Yeah. So like got that bit of niggle in the games. So yeah, the first week of training, like 
everyone's like quiet, sussing each other out. There's not much like mixed in Wales boys sat together, Scottish boys, English boys. And um, yeah, we went to Russia, then played a tournament, mixed the teams up. Uh, it didn't go that well, like on the field, like boy, mi- like different teams, different combinations. We yeah. just played like a full season. So boys with near girls and stuff, boiling up in Russia, like shit pitch, we're walking dog on it. <laughs> uh, then, uh, afterwards, um, uh, like Simon Emo and Babs, they run like unbelievable camp, everything planned like perfectly really. Yeah, and they set us, uh, booked us a basement of a bar in the middle of Moscow, Gosh. and we had like a kangaroo court. Yeah, and then like after that, then we're all like best mates, like good night, like fucking wild so things you can't declare, but like yeah, yeah uh, of course, you know, like the bits are gone and uh, all end up steaming in Burger King in Moscow and get back to the hotel and uh, stories and the next day what the boys go up to and <laughs> things like that. And then like from that moment, like that's when like, I, I say after the Moscow trip, that's when like that Team GB squad really come yeah. together. It's mad in an Olympic squad, you've got 12 weeks to make it. You think like some of those in other sports, like, I don't know, fucking yeah. athletics or whatever, they're training in four year cycles, you get four given 12 cycle. weeks. And then some people are in like eight year cycles where they know they're not going to make the one, but they're training for someone to leave to make the next one. Like yeah, yeah. Bonkers. That's fucking berserk, man. It's, it's yeah. as testament, I suppose, to you guys in the setup that you're able to go to, because it's not just talent that gets you to a final of something like that. That's, that's off field and on field coming through together. It's such like a unique opportunity, though, because as a rugby player, you never think you're going to get a chance to play in Olympic Games. No, no. And then like the opportunity come up, and I was just like, oh, that, like, I, I, that's my. Like, 